How's it going from a sunny but windy West Cork? The house survived. There's, um, I can't, I don't know what storm it's called, but there was a lot of trees around the area in Cork. There's a lot of houses without power. We managed to survive. We've had no trees down, a few branches. The ladder fell down. Still quite windy. We're gonna try and take down the rafters today. And if I'm lucky, I might take down the chimneys. There ain't nothing in this house that's standard or normal. wasn't very well put together. I've just noticed something really cool that these are, they're probably a mix between a collar tie, which is at the very top of the two rafters to stop them opening out. And then kind of a, a other ceiling joist or a rafter tie at the bottom of two rafters to stop them bowing out. Usually depending on the load, you need a collar tie at the top, a rafter tie at the bottom, sometimes a kind of a ceiling. But I've just noticed because this has always been a very tall ceiling and I've wondered why it was so tall. But when they cut these rafters, they just put 45 degree angles at the end, a fixed length. And then they also cut the, the ties the exact same length. So you have rafter on the back, rafter on the front and tie in the middle. They're all the same length. So basically I imagine they just put the roof together and just pushed up the tie as far as it could go. Very fast, very efficient way of building a roof because you do all your cutting down below every piece is exactly the same so you just grab one that's probably what led to the wonkiness of this roof because it isn't straight it isn't square so if you cut all of your rafters and ties before coming up then you're really bending the ridge and bending the roof to try to get them all into fit so that's why parts of the roof are high parts of the roof are low parts of the roof are to the front parts of the roof are to the back and Fingers crossed we can do something to correct that. I'm not too optimistic, but it's nice. It's nice to see things like that. How they used to build back in, back in the olden days. But if you can see, I'm pretty much sneezing on them and they're falling out. I'm pretty glad we're changing this, to be honest. Not the, uh, the most structurally sound. And another funny thing, I don't know if I showed you this already, but some of the rafters, like they're not straight. They're also at an angle just to try and make that fit. You don't learn about these construction techniques in the school books, I tell you that. I put on a brand new metal blade on the reciprocating saw. I thought I was going to be cutting through the nails, but it's all kind of rotten and falling apart. Put a brand new um, wood blade on this reciprocating saw. We never got to do these ones. Number one, it was difficult because it was over the stairs. Two, we ran out of battery, literally. It was about nine o'clock last night. We were both drenched from five hours in the rain. I saw it was going a bit blunt, so we left it. We took the tiles off. We just left the battens and the felt. So I need to take two of them off, at least because I'm coming to the center. I don't know, can you see this? Coming to the center of the house, right about, I point it back a bit, right about here is where the two ridges meet. Now they don't actually look connected, which may be, and it's very, it's very thin actually, so no wonder it didn't stay straight. But as soon as I take out these two rafters, I expect the ridge beam to just swing down. So I'm just going to be a bit more careful on these two. And then I'll leave the space here and I'll maybe start from the other end. Probably don't want to be standing under the ridge. There we 
we go. Move you out of the way, keep you safe. Gotta show you my old faithful. And Claire looks up. This is the first tool I ever bought. It's actually called Faithful. I don't know, can you see that? And I've loved this tool for so long, but this project bent it. I may need to get a new Faithful. Get a newer model. <laughs> You could see that the, the top of the ridge beam was rotten. This chimney though well, seems pretty well built. I will have to take it down though. It's just a source of damp and leakage. So we'll get rid of that. Interestingly, when we we'll see in a little minute, but when we take this down, we can see that crack that's in the fireplace stemmed from this ridge beam. This ridge beam was put on top of a joint between two concrete blocks. It was probably fine for a while. Um, you can see these noggins here. So I believe there was a water tank there which served the bathroom. And when they got central heating and a boiler, they put a much bigger water um, tank there and they put a boiler tank. The weight of it was too long, pulled on the ties, which took down the ridge and forced pressure all the way down through the chimney stack. So, interesting. careful now about the last bit the ridge board is actually not attached to this chimney I'm just kind of resting there as soon as this becomes unstable I think the whole thing might fall forward um, 
and that'll just slide out here this ridge board i'm kind of thinking whether i want that to happen and have it quick or whether i want to keep it somewhat stable hmm let's see Bit, uh, got a bit cheeky there. This is our last working toilet in the house. It's um, this is a special model with um, really expensive air fresheners. It smells just like just like the countryside in here. Actually, it's uncanny. Really, you can almost smell the cows in the field behind. However, I got a bit cheeky and i thought i could stand on this because i don't know that i record it but the second day after we moved into this house i didn't actually at the very beginning um i said i didn't record anything for the first week or two we we're a little bit overwhelmed but the second day in here the bolt holding the toilet up here on this side broke the toilet um cistern tipped over kind of leaked a little bit I managed to secure it, put a new uh, kind of anchor bolt in there, and all was good. And just now I thought I'll chance standing on it, and of course the bolt on the other side went. Cistern went down, water flooded, because it wasn't enough, we had a feckin' storm last night, and drenched the house. Just when it's starting to dry out, let's just tip a cistern on top. Anyway. The joys of it. So we're, we're down to like maybe half a toilet, I'd say. Half a toilet. We got loads of trees. We can go al fresco. I put a time lapse on. Well, I thought I did. I didn't. So what I did is. Let me just show you. Let me show you how smart I am. I knocked that one. Can you see it? No. I knocked this one. I knocked this one. I knocked this one. Look at that. What a strong board. But I did not knock these two because I wanted these to be anchored just in case because it's hard to reach these uh, they're over the stairs so I actually knocked the two of them so they're loose and just when I knocked the last one as I expected the ridge has come out of the wall look at that let's see if I can get you up a bit what a disaster. Can you see the crack all the way to the top of the chimney because the weight of the water on this point started to split the chimney and it forced the crack all the way down. All the way downstairs. Anyway. So basically what I'm saying is I'm pretty I'm pretty glad I included these two bits here and have it reinforced because it's all about to collapse. Well, there you have it. How to take off a roof with no clue and make it look like a really big V-lock. That's the job. Happy days. Right, cup of tea, I think. Cup of tea. Standing in our living room, it took an awful dose last night. A lot of water came down. We managed to protect the consumer unit though. Still dry, everything works fine. Um, but a lot of water. So much so that the dog actually stayed in the uh, caravan with us. But look, a little bit of water went on the stove. Within one night, we have rust. And I can't actually light this to dry it because I'm just about to demolish the chimney. 
but it must have just come down here. Hoping these floorboards, this, there's always moisture at the chimney, so we're just hoping these floorboards are okay and they're not rotten. The rest, they got a bit of water damage, but they're actually not too bad. The big rain is coming tomorrow, or sorry, on Monday. So, we try and get the ridge on and we will try to get some waterproofing down on it. So Claire is moving the uh, asbestos and hi. Hi. And then we're rolling back the cover to try and dry the ground and it's quite hot so it's already dried here. And we're going to use this uh, covering to wrap up the asbestos slates. They have to be um, covered for shipping. And then, there's the tripod. Here we go. And then all the rafters that I took down, I am using this very handy gable window to excavate them. This is a shed I've been saying I have to demolish for quite some time. And we're just going to probably chop that off, burn it, firewood. Um, and any concrete that I take from the chimney, I'm just going to chuck in there to help with the infill for our floor. So, so yeah. So, weekends are busy and uh, we're just flying along and I forgot to get you your charging. But um, what have we done? We've taken all the rafters off, we've cleaned up all the slates, we've taken up the membrane to let the floor dry a little bit. Um, downstairs is a lot wetter but nice sunshine here to help us and tomorrow at the end of the day, we'll try and figure out another solution for keeping this place dry. I've gone up to the chimneys out. This was exposed, it looked like simple concrete blocks, really. They look in bad shape, so they look easy to take down. I was expecting the same over here. Kind of feels like this thing's built like a feckin', I don't know, it's built stronger. It just seems to be stone. So I will take you up. I'm on my own, so I have uh, kind of a support nailed into the ground so this ladder is not going back i also have the top very loosely tied off here so that ain't going anywhere and we have been doing a little bit of work up here and Seems to be just round stones. <sighs> nice view from up here. Put our earth moving, going on a few fields over. So not hugely exciting. I'm gonna throw you on a tripod and see whether you can see anything. I'm not sure you'll see much from down there, but I'm not going to have you up with me. I want both my hands ready. because 
I'm actually leaving on the part that I'm demolishing. So when I knock it, the ladder knocks forward. Don't try this at home. Well, I guess the time lapse wasn't on. We did kind of finish that chimney. It's a little bit proud. I'm going to leave it like that in case we have to raise or lower the levels for the ridge. Oh, a little bit too far. The unholy one left. Um, I imagine construction is the same. A lot more concrete blocks here though. didn't think you'd fall on the electricity cable that was risky I'm gonna let you be if I go down again I'll put on time maps I might just leave you off but actually one thing I will say is what a view from up here eh I don't nearly do enough drone shots It'd actually be nice to do a drone shot with this all right you can do it Hey ho everyone, just a quick update from a freaking scorching West Cork. My father was here today, so I didn't do much recording, but we managed to get the ridge on. I'll show you up close in a minute, but uh, it was a really tough problem. Uh, it was a nice bit of solutioning. It was a fun, fun problem to work on. I'll show you everything we did. It's been a long couple of days. Today, on top of everything, we had heat exhaustion. Oh, cool, look at that butterfly. Exciting while it lasts. Didn't do any recording today as my father was here. Well, my mum as well. As well as this, as much as it's nice to do some work and to film it, it's also nice just to tune out and spend some time with family trying to solve problems. So we had a really, interesting problem with how to do this ridge beam we came up with this central support which not only does it support it but they both lay flat and it allowed us to i don't know how to explain it uh this beam we laid down flat on the ground and this central support we also angled backwards so we could walk the both of them up together nail it off on the door and the floor and then the ridge beam was floating we put a 45 degree scarf joint in it we have some screws and nails holding it in place um, but when the rafters are up they will hold it in place and we took that on to here as you saw from last night that chimney was just a stone built chimney so i just infilled that with a strap the silver thing is a strap. Tied that on the beam, put that down the chimney and concreted up the chimney with some um, stones at the very top. At this end, it was not that straightforward because we have the crack. The crack that goes all the way up the chimney to here, which means all of this will have to come down. So what we have to do was to knock the inside to a level where we could build it back up. So some concrete blocks, just to give it a nice pad. It's not actually like load bearing blocks of pad stone um, because again, this ridge beam won't bear any load. Just to keep it in place so we can fit the rafters. What a lovely evening. Maybe it's worth doing the drone tonight. I don't know. Okay. Actually, fuck it, I'll just stay here. So we have started to put the wall plate down and 
top plate then on top of that just to make a really nice solid um somewhat level i mean it's not perfectly level this ridge is level we need it level enough so that we can anchor it to the concrete wall it's going to be a bit trickier at the back it'll need a bit of cleaning um that's for another day i didn't get it done and to be honest i've been at it since 9 a.m it's about 8 p.m now we worked very slow and made sure we did everything nice and safe and on point for this ridge so i'm gonna take that as a win and i am going to go and have some lovely roast lamb yorkshire puddings roast potatoes and that may not sound like a big deal but when we've been in a caravan for about <laughs> there here's we've been in the caravan for almost three four months and we haven't had a proper oven and we haven't had a proper roast that sounds divine bit of red wine as well polish it off okay so that's it tomorrow's bank holiday and the weather is meant to be rainy but i mean it kind of looks great if uh if I can do a little bit more, I'll do it tomorrow, but really I was expecting Monday we wouldn't do anything and Tuesday we get back to this. This wall actually is straightforward enough. So our roof, we just have a simple three meter run from the top to the bottom. And it should be really easy just to do all the rafters and line this up. I say easy, but I've never done it before in my life. So for a novice, it should be fairly easy. Well, With that, tune out, Yorkshire Puds, here I come, later. Oh my God, get in my belly. This is a roast dinner, compliments of granddad. Well, not and granddad, really. Uh, we haven't had a roast in about four months. Are you happy to have roast lamb, Claire? Yes. Are you happy to have it, Ash? So. I'm very freaking happy to have it. Cheers, Grandad. <laughs>
And when I tried to anchor it through both, we weren't getting enough purchase. So I had to take a wood screw or a wood drill bit and kind of groove out about 30 millimeters to go straight down. So I could then anchor it and it was an absolute disaster. It took so much time. I kind of, I ran out of the number eights I was using. So I had to use number tens, couldn't find the SCS drill. It was a, it was a big mess last night. So I'm going to take it a little bit slow. I'm going to finish this off. I can try on time lapse, and then we're going to tackle the back, which is uh, all different sorts of problems. Basically, the construction of the back wall is very different to the front wall. Yeah, let me finish this. I'll try on time lapse and look at the back then. There's three anchor bolts in there that are sitting a little bit proud. I'm going to hammer the top plate down. It's going to leave some indentations. I'm going to drill out a little cavity. Then I'll be able to put this board back on top and nail it down. And job's a good one. First wall plate is done. Um, yeah, it's not pretty. Claire's gonna come up now and fill any low parts in the render just to tidy that up. Um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it, but this is a concrete. This is a concrete wall that's built concrete blocks on their flat and just staggered. Um, there was poured concrete above the windows so where you see the cracks here no can you see that where you see the cracks here there you go this is all a poured lintel and the concrete blocks start here so i'm anchoring into the concrete blocks on either side of the window as you look up this way you can see it really the actual wall quite bows out here now there's a couple of reasons we think this happened number one the ridge board wasn't tied together and the wall plates weren't tied together. So when the weight of the, um, the roof went on, it would naturally have pushed the walls out a little bit. The second reason was because they added water supply system, which I thought was going to fall at one point. And that seems to have pulled the ridge down, pulled the whole roof down and cracked all of the, um, the stonework. So that's been rectified. This has been rectified. This wall plate now should stop the wall from bowing out any further because it's holding the two gables together. But also, if we look down, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already. This is the, this is the actual old stone wall. It's a huge old rubble stone wall from the cottage. It's about 60 centimeters thick right down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Two by four, not this, this is a two by six. I'm gonna plant that here and I'm going to frame another wall on the inside. This is actually where I'm gonna put insulation for um, the kids' bedrooms. But I'm actually gonna frame it straight up to the rafters. You can't really see anything I'm showing. Let's see if that works now. It's not bad. Okay. Cool. So anyway, this concrete wall is built on the outside of the old stone wall so that they could have a flat surface to, um, to what you call it, to plaster basically. So it looked, it looked like it was all built at the same time, a farmhouse. And that also contributed, I think, to a slight bowing because it should have really been centered over the old rubble. So what I'm going to do, as I was saying, is I'm going to 
build an internal wall. It was going to be non-load bearing, um, just so I could put insulation in for the kids' rooms. But now I'm going to attach it to the rafters and make it load bearing. So this wall plate is not going to take all the weight of the, the front ceiling. It's going to be split between the wall and the stud work that I'm going to put in here, the load bearing stud work. That's going to run the length. That's going to make this front of the house and the roof super strong. Even though it's a bow in it, that'll be mostly cosmetic. The main stru structure is going to be supported on the old uh, stone wall, which already has a ring beam. They put on before they added this. It's kind of in the back, but not really. Um, I don't need to show it. The back wall is built with uh, cavity blocks. It's actually quite straight, so there's no bows really there. But again, on the far side, I'm going to build a stud at the front door, piggery, kitchen area. So the weight of the roof would be split between the old stone wall and the new stud wall. So essentially, even though I'm putting on a lighter roof in terms of corrugation versus slate, the superstructure is going to be heavier because I'm using 8 by 2s as for the rafters and the collar ties instead of 3 by 1s and yeah it's going to be spread in two payloads so it's going to be a lighter stronger and well load bearing roof basically over engineered probably but when your DIY is as shady as mine it's no harm to over engineer things so you're going to see Claire coming up she's going to fill in these gaps um, and I I'm going to start on the back and I'll show you what's going on up there in a minute. For some reason here they have added, you can just see the remains of a piece of wood there. That piece of wood was here also and there's another piece of wood there. This is the concrete blocks and the rest of the roof up there is concrete blocks if you can see it up there and I reckon they built it on a slope so the level actually dropped down around the middle of the house so they raised it up with these what i gotta do is i gotta chisel or knock all these guys out just get a flat and then i gotta take my own levels figure out some way also to raise it up so that won't be straightforward i'll try and get in as good a viewpoint as possible really i won't know what's needed until i knock this out and take some levels so I'll do that. There's also some huge carriage bolts that they used to secure the wall plates. I don't know. So I'll have to grind these out as well. There's one more up there. So that's it. I'll try and get you somewhere nice and I'll try you on time lapse. just when the uh, good weather well average weather disappeared um, I was just gone out to get a bit of wood I must show you if I was to do this again I would have all the materials delivered to the top of the hill I mean it sounds good to keep all the materials at the bottom next to the barns but that's all downhill so every piece of wood we have to get I have to go all the way down and pick it up 2x4s are not too bad, 2x6s start to get heavy so you can only carry one at a time, 2x8s are, whew, they're crazy and they do come to 2x8s, we have some uh, 8 meters of 2x8s, so that's heavy. So if you can see, I'm soaked, I don't know, can you see, there's a water, it's actually raining inside the house, 
this is what we're putting up with. Hopefully it's only a short shower, but um, yeah, everything is a little wet. Okay, let me try and maneuver these. I actually cut these uh, two pieces of wood to size down in the shed. We have normally been sticking them in through the tall window because I cut them to size they don't quite fit. So I haven't taken anything up the stairs. Oh, it's not really fitting, is it? And I have a door up there protecting some of my tools. Something is stuck at the back. Okay, there goes my uh, little LED light. You spell it smashed. Coming hot in the heels of the smashed GoPro. For those of ye, for those of ye who think, oh, oh, buying a feckin' farmhouse is a good idea. It is not. Okay, these are all great. Oh. I better turn off the music. So I don't get copyright infringement. Holy shit. As I was saying, for those of you that think buying an old farmhouse and restoring it is a good idea. Well, I mean, it is. But you gotta be prepared to put up with a hell of a lot of shit. I mean, We had this tarped over the last night, but these are only meant to be showers and it's still quite warm out. So I hope the showers will pass and they'll dry up nicely tomorrow. Oh, get the nail gun. The nail gun's in the sink. We gotta keep this place clean. What would people think if they visit it? Keeping the ladder dry, makes sense. Uh, keeping the toilet paper dry, <laughs> probably more important, anyway. So I'm going to do a really quick time lapse, I'm just going to get these two sides done and I'm going to take the rest of the rainy day to edit. Few of my jobs done now. The wall plate is pretty straight, pretty level. We had to chip away some parts of concrete. We had to anchor it in about five locations. Um, it's another one actually. It's, it's pretty sturdy, but the wall's a little bit wonky. Don't know if you can see here. It's just wood. There's no masonry at all here, so um, we'll have to. Take out that wall, that lintel, take out this whole window. Probably build it back up to wall plate level, so we just leave that open for the time being. These will have to be filled, nice anchor point there. These will have to be filled, these will have to be filled, anchor point at the end. So, I mean, by no means is it perfect, but it ain't half bad. I get the feeling this house is never. I, I, I like. I I keep having to have to feckin' make repairs. This is, I mean, the pipe's leaking. Isn't that hilarious? There's no roof on it, and we're in the middle of a storm, but I have to keep repairing these things. Does that not do that? All right. 
I could turn off the tap. But it's raining in the sink, so what are you gonna do? This is what Claire did. I don't know if you saw her in the background. But she started to fill in on both sides. This is where the wall really bows out on the front. Actually, maybe you'll be able to see this. This would be pretty cool. So, if you can see, the wall plate is correcting a little bit of it. But, um, yeah, we'll have to fix it up. Fix it up with the wall we're gonna do here, the second wall to take below. But even that's pretty solid. Nicely filled, it's all coming along.